Welcome to the Ethiad Cargo Connections with 10 Furlongs Magazine. I'm your host today, Aurelian Drumian. Today, we have the privilege of interviewing Richard Fahe, a renowned horse trainer. We will, walk, we will talk about his collaboration with Mr. Ferguson, recounting the introduction and the journey of Spirit Dancer. Delving into Spirit Dancer career highlights, including the triumphant 2023 Bahrain International Trophy, revealing the horse personality. We will continue then with insights into training methods, anticipating challenges and adaptations for the upcoming Saudi events. And finally, discussing his team, Spirit Dancer's post Bahrain plan, travel logistic, and the potential presence of Mr. Ferguson at the Saudi Cup. So Richard, great to have you here. First of all, your last name is Mr. Fahey, right? Yeah. Okay, just making sure. <laughs> great. Could it's, you tell us a bit more about um, how you met Mr. Ferguson, you know, the working relationship you share with him, and how did Spirit Dancer come to you? Yeah, I've, I've always trained on and off for uh, Sir Alex. Um, he had a horse with a, a gentleman I used to train for called Jack Hansen. Uh, Fred Jack has sadly passed away in the last couple of years, but they were big pals. And uh, Jack sort of introduced me to Sir Alex, and they had a share in a two year old with me, um, I would say seven, eight years ago. So that was the first sort of. Uh, introduction to Sir Alex and to be fair to Sir Alex he's, uh, he's, he's a gentleman and a, a pretty easy character to get on with and, and we struck it off quite quite well uh, he was um, he was manager at Ultra uh, Manchester United at the time and he used to invite me to the Arsenal games I'm an Arsenal fan believe it or not and <laughs> uh, I think he thoroughly enjoyed uh, me going there because I never actually witnessed Arsenal beat United at Old Trafford so uh I think the last game I went, I think the beat was eight two. So uh, I haven't been back since. So uh, I, I I put it down that I was uh, I was bad luck to Arsenal football team going to watch them play. But from there and then we've always had little bits and pieces. Uh, and this was a homebred horse. Sir Alex bred this horse himself with uh, with his team, and uh, rang me one day and asked me if I'd like to train him, which he didn't realise at the time. He was by Frankel and. I couldn't, well, he realised he was by Frankel, but he didn't realise I couldn't afford to buy them. So I was delighted to get my hands on a Frankel. Uh, he was a horse that I was hugely impressed with and always felt he'd make a good sire. Aaron side has shown I was correct. But it was he was the first Frankel yearling that we'd actually actually trained. So it was, right. uh, it was great to get him. Great to get him. Great. Very good. Which races, I'd like to talk a bit more about Spirit Dancer specifically. Which racers would you say were Spirit Dancer career's best? Um, I suppose the Bahrain, uh, the, the last run in, in the Bahrain International, sure. um, you would have to rate that as probably one of his best performances. He, he had a good run here in the Strensel um, at, at York at the the big uh, Ebor meeting. Uh, that that was a good performance, but you'd, you'd nearly have to say his best performance was his last um the handicappers thought so he's he's put him up to 118 now um so so realistically yeah winning a million dollar race and uh, it was not how winning the race it was how impressive he was um he uh, he wasn't stopping at the end and uh, really galloped out through the line you know for well, sure what was it like winning the race this Bahrain you know international trophy yeah, it, it was a race that we'd had a runner in before. Uh, we'd finished third in it a couple of seasons ago. And and to be honest, from the beginning of the season this year, I, I had it in my mind to go there um, because they'd sort of doubled the prize money from half a million to a million. And wow. uh, I, say I had finished third in it with a filly that wasn't a, a horse like this, but she was a decent filly, uh, a three-year-old filly. And I, I just thought if we can get this guy uh, where where we feel he should be, um, he would take he would take a lot of beating in the race. Now, but they did double the prize money, but which made it a more competitive race. Okay. But strangely enough, when he won the Strensel, it it was a win in your in race. If you win that race, you get automatically invited to it. Well, I had it in my mind before that. I didn't realise till after he'd won the race that it was a win in your in race, and well, it. <laughs> it all all the signs were saying that we should go to Bahrain. So, wow, 
Well, that's a very good choice, I guess. <laughs> that was that was. It it was a great day, uh, you know. It was uh, Sir Alex was there and and uh, and and his partners, and it was fantastic. Great. Could you tell us a bit more about his personality, her personality? Like, if she was a person, how would you describe Spirit Dancer? Um, would have been rude. She is a he. Uh, he's a gelding. Um, very, very laid back. He's quite a big horse, uh, as you can see. He's, he, for a seven-year-old, he hasn't actually run an awful lot of times. He was very immature and and uh, a late developer, I think, is, is, is what you would call him. Uh, he, you know, 23 runs for a seven-year-old isn't a lot. Uh, early on in his training career, he did have a few little issues with his knees and he just, just immaturity, but fair juice to uh, Peter and and um, the team there, they they, uh, they gave us time and Sir Alex, they gave us time with him and we always felt he was a nice horse and as he's got older and strengthened up, he took his training better, but he's a very laid back character and nothing bothers him and, and, and an easy horse to train. Um, when I say early on, we just had to be very patient with him and, and the team were patient with him and they're reaping the benefit now, you know. How do you get this immaturity into winning the Bahrain International Trophy? Uh, as, uh, <laughs> well, in maturity, it just means they need time. And as I say, he, he, he was a six-year-old when he won it. Um, so he, he, he just give him time to mature. And, and that's that's what the team have done. Uh, as I say, I keep repeating myself, 23 runs for a seven-year-old. He's a lot. Um, so we had to be patient, very patient. Uh, I, I don't think he ran till he was three or, or definitely late back to year old and didn't have a, a very busy campaign up to the, up to sort of this year and, and last year he was sort of busy. -ish. So it just meant we had to give him time. And, and as I say, the owners were extremely patient and, and left it to me. I kept telling him he was a good horse and one day he'll show it to them. And, and he is starting to show it now, you know. He is starting to show it. That's great. I'm sure also a lot of training and techniques, which I'd like to talk more now. So could you provide us, Richard, some insight into the kind of you know training methods and techniques that you employ maybe to condition and hone um, his physical and mental abilities, or maybe mm -hmm. even you know other horses for such a high level inter international races? Yeah, it's uh, there's no right and wrong way of training horses. There's, there's the way I train. Um, I would call myself a bit of an old-fashioned trainer. Uh, when I say old-fashioned, uh, we don't do the, the the you know the short, sharp gallops. We we, we train up a hill, uh, quite okay. a stiff hill. Um, uh, it's a mile long as a gallop, and. Uh, you know, we 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 sort of not too technical. When I say technical, we we sort of what would I call myself? Probably a horseman or or a stockman rather than a, a technical trainer. Um, I, I go on a lot on feel, um, and each in the individual horse is individual. Uh, they're like humans; they've got different traits, and, and that's what I try and find what suits one horse might suit another. Um, but generally, they'll more or less train the same. But the odd one just needs a little bit of TLC or, or the opposite needs needs grabbing hold of and make it work. But with Spirit Dancer, he's pretty straightforward. He's a he's a true professional. He uh, he never offers to do anything wrong and just gets on with his job and does what I what I ask him to do. So he's he's quite simple to train. As I said, just a little bit immature, needs a bit of time to catch up with the strength. Uh, luckily, we got the opportunity to do that. Some owners aren't patient. Uh, so Alex and Peter and uh, the the three owners were were very patient and, and left it to me and uh, which as I said they are reaping the benefits. Very good. So as we mentioned before, he has raced and won in Bahrain, but whether it's you know the Neom Turf Cup or the Saudi Cup, both of them are very high pressure races. Uh, what kind of changes do you think will come into play when preparing him for Saudi? Um, you know, will empower uh, him at his peak there, or at, yeah, his, level, at his peak. In theory, uh, not a lot of in training will. When when he won in Bahrain, I was sort of quite keen to leave him out there. Okay. Uh, we but to acclimatize and everything. We we find when we're traveling horses to to hot countries, um, 
the best way to prepare them is to prepare them at home, uh, leave them a gallop short and run them off the plane, as we call it, sort of come in four, five, six days, get your work done at home and uh, and hopefully don't have to do an awful lot when you arrive on the track. You know, you, you'll see an odd trainer maybe doing plenty, but you get the feeling that maybe the horse had missed a bit at home before he, rab- he travelled. But I tend, as I say, everybody trains differently. I tend to get them fit leave them a gallop short and the, and the flight and the travel will, will knock them extra kilos off in, in transit, you know? Now, um, I, after he won in Bahrain, I was quite keen to maybe leave him there to acclimatize. Sure. Uh, but it, Do you have any plans it, on doing that? Acclimatizing? Well, to, to... It, what's actually happened is I brought him back home. Uh, he's actually in Dubai at the moment. He left there two days ago, runs there this week. Okay. And I will leave him. I will leave him in in um, in in Dubai, and then he'll go from Dubai to Saudi, and then back to Dubai, hopefully for World Cup night. So he 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 gives him plenty of time. We'll run them off the plane, which I like to do. He only left on Monday. He runs on Friday, so we'll run them off the plane this weekend in Dubai, and then he'll have his sort of four or five weeks from now to the Saudi Cup or or the Neon. To, to acclimatize and, and get into uh, get into his Middle East mode, if that makes sense. Right, you know? sure. And then the plan, if everything went well there, would be to go back to Dubai and run on World Cup night in Dubai. So he's a uh, he's a uh, he's a, uh, a, a middle, middle East trained horse now for the <laughs> next couple. Of, you know, I'm sure it must be very important to acclimatize to to the the region. You know. Especially for the yeah, we, we we find running off the plane for for us European horses is is easier, okay. but to to acclimatize, I think they do need four or five weeks to actually acclimatize. It sounds silly, running off the plane is easy, but oh. if you get them in there three four weeks prior, yeah. it, they they can they can just go backwards a bit on you. But the beauty is we're getting a run into them. We don't have to do a lot from now to to Saudi. So we'll take him over in the in Dubai after the run this weekend, and uh, hopefully keep him in one piece. <laughs> Let's talk a bit about the challenges. Uh, maybe you will face, you know, in front of yourself for preparing for Saudi. For example, external factors such as competitors, track conditions, travel logistics. What kind of challenges will you face? You think? Yeah, it's it sounds easy. Uh, <laughs> the challenge is, is mainly that the horse uh, acclimatizes to the heat mm-hmm. uh, and eats and drinks. That's the, probably the most important thing. But generally, with the, with the better horses, they generally have a good mind anyway, and they're <laughs> they're pretty they're pretty laid back characters, and and they're professional athletes, if that makes sense. Uh, going back to horses like humans, some can take it, some can't. But we, we tend to take the right horse on these journeys that we know that will have the opportunity to to do himself justice. Um, other worries, there's not really any. Um, you just hope you just hope that they, they settle in pretty well and get into a routine and, and, and relax. Are you are you worried about any competitors specifically? Uh, I had a quick look at the entries. <laughs> the entry came in uh, last week. Uh, I mean, it's probably, I'm not sure, I think there's 250 in one race and 300 in another. So I, I glanced at it. Um, but yes, the quality, the prize money is exceptional, um, especially for the big race, the, the Dubai, or the, sorry, apologies, the Saudi Cup. $20 million. Uh, I mean, anybody who's got a good horse wants to run and win in the, and that. And it's a good surface in in Saudi. I haven't personally seen it, but looking at the results and looking at the horses that have been shipped to Saudi, turf horses and dirt horses seem to act on it. It's a different sort of dirt track. So they've got the beauty of that. They can get a good turf horse and a good dirt horse to, wow. to run on it. So it is, it is an, an exceptional track, really. Um, when I say exceptional, it's a great big galloping track that generally on on the so-called dirt, as they call it, uh, turf horses run on it, you know. So uh, 
uh, the opposition was the question. The opposition are terrified with it because uh, at the entry stage, it is an extremely, both races are extremely competitive. But uh, I'll worry about Dubai this weekend and then uh, start worrying about that the week before. Well, I, to be fair, I don't, I don't worry. I'll let, I'll let everyone else worry. I'll just see what happens. Fair but I will, decide, I will decide later which, which race he'll, he'll run in. Fair enough. I guess competition is also part of the game and, and the joy of it, for sure. Yeah. It's it's good to be involved in these international races. Uh, we've been lucky over the years. Maybe not. We'd, we'd be a smallish trainer compared to the the mighty powerhouses of Colmore and all them teams. But we've been we've been lucky. We've had winners in uh, Canada. We've had loads of winners in France, Ireland. Uh, I've had the horsebreaker track record in Taby, winner in Bahrain. So we we've had experience of of sort of travelling abroad, but. The racing world is getting smaller the whole time now. It's it's not a big ordeal anymore to, to travel. Could you tell us a little bit more about the team you work with? Um, well, there'd be, uh, I'd say a team that's probably about 65 directly involved with the riding and the, 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 the looking after the horses, 65 people. And then you could add your, we've got three blacksmiths, we've got a couple of vets and transport people that we use and everything but generally uh most of the people that uh that that work for me a lot of them have been here since or since i started sort of 27 28 years ago so uh, <laughs> it's uh it's 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 a little bit like launching a ship everybody knows what they do and we we launch it every morning and uh, the job gets done so uh, i'm extremely lucky and very privileged to have the stuff i have and I'm afraid we're in a very high work intensive industry and if you don't have the staff, we are we are finished, I'm afraid. That's we're good. we're we're only the name on the on the ticket, but it's the staff that do all the work, I'm afraid. Well, I'm not afraid, I'm delighted. You know, and, <laughs> it's like a big family. It's a, it's a great it is. You've just nailed it, yes. It is, it is a big family. Excellent. Uh, do you think Saudi was always the plan for Spirit Dancer after winning Bahrain? Oh, most definitely, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we sort of we had the Middle East circuit uh, um, on our mind, uh, and I've been saying it to Sir Alex and, and the boys there that you know we 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 won't over race it, but we need to get his rating up. We need to get his rating up, and we gave him a little break after uh, after he won the Strensel to 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 sort of have have this. Uh, so a Middle Eastern tour, if that makes sense. Now he got beat uh, on his first run back after after York when he won the Strensel, but I wasn't surprised. I just I felt he he carried a penalty in that race for winning the Strensel, and and he probably just needed the run a touch. So, but it put him spot on for Bahrain. And as I say, we've ticked him over. He's 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 in great order at the moment. So the little holiday after the August meeting at uh, at York. Was was a plan for this Middle Eastern tour. So, uh, fingers crossed, everything's going right at the moment. But uh, as we know, with animals there, things can go wrong. But sure. I'll push wood and pray nothing goes wrong. But he's he's where I want him at the moment. Yes. Sure. Could you tell us a little bit more about the travel logistics? Like, when will he be traveling, and who's going with him, or when are you planning to go there? Yeah. Well. As I say, I'm doing a little bit different. Uh, I was going to fly straight into Saudi, but I, I I felt we we didn't have a race in England here to run him in as a prep run for for uh, the Saudi. So I decided to to take a, the the Dubai race in. Um, as I say, he's already there. Um, we've only got one member of staff there at the moment. Haley, who looks after him, will 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 fly in Saudi about five or six days before he runs. Um, the logistics are, I think, looking at it, I've, I've made some inquiries. I think the, the the horses coming in from Dubai, he'll fly from Dubai now to Saudi. I think they come in very late, whereas the European horses come in a little bit earlier. So he he has the beauty of, this is why being in Dubai is brilliant. He has the beauty that he hasn't got a, a long travel from from Dubai to Saudi. So that should help him. Um and 
realistically, without being particularly rude, uh, horses travel extremely well. We prepare them well for traveling. We will uh, fill them full of fluids and and make sure everything's comfortable and they get very well looked after on the place. Uh, I mean, humans, well, some humans, when they go flying a long haul, the, the first thing they do is, is drink alcohol, will dehydrate themselves. Well, we, we, we hydrate the horses before they go. I have no doubt the horses <laughs> will, will travel an awful lot better than, than some, of, some of the humans. So <laughs> they get very well looked after. Uh, he's had the experience of the flying. He, he, he f- had, a, had a long trip into Bahrain last time. He got stuck on the runway, I'm afraid, mm-hmm. which didn't help us. Uh, so we hydrated him, filled him full of fluids when he got got to Bahrain. And look, he bounced back quick. I think uh, he loaded up on the flight at Luton. I think he was on the plane for five hours before they took off to wow. Bahrain. So it was a it was a long haul there, long travelling. But as you can see, because we filled him full of fluids, and as soon as next morning we got more fluids into him, he, he bounced back quick in a week. He'd lost quite a bit of weight, but he he bounced back. Put it like this, they get better looked after than, than humans, I'd say. <laughs> or we look after them better than humans look after themselves. <laughs> well, I'm sure. <laughs> we'll put it that way. Uh, are you also planning to go to the Middle East, Richard? On... I'm actually flying to Dubai tonight. Uh, oh, wow. Just, 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 to, just to keep an eye on, on him. Uh, as I say, he's been, he's been there three days. Apologies, yeah, three days he's been there. He's had two light counters, uh, but I'm flying in there uh, on the night flight. So I'll be there. What day are we today? Tuesday morning, I'll be there. So I'll just, just keep an eye on him for before he runs and then watch him race and then come back. But he's he's staying there and I'm coming home and then I'll fly into Saudi probably five or six days before the race. Wow, lots of flying. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's fantastic. It's it's wonderful to be I'm sure. involved. Wow. That's wonderful. Sounds amazing. Do you think Mr. Ferguson will also be attending the Saudi Cup Day? Yes, I, I think the plan is at the moment that that the team are coming. Um, and uh, I think he, he got extremely well looked after in, in Bahrain and loved the trip. Uh, I mean, I know it's great when he won, that probably helped, but he was enjoying the trip even before the horse had won. And he has shown a big interest and in, and in, and wants wants to go. So uh, he's got it in his diary. Just hopefully something doesn't come up where he can't go. But the the lads are all keen to get get themselves there. You know. Fair enough. What is the plan after Saudi? Well, like everything else, we'll see see what happens this weekend. Uh, but he'll definitely go to Saudi. And we'll just see how he is after Saudi and we'll make the decision whether he flies back home or flies on to Dubai. In an ideal world, I would love everything to go well in Saudi and and just fly back to Dubai for for a World Cup night in Dubai. You know? okay. So that, that would be the plan. Great. And finally, on to the last question, Richard. Given your experience in this industry, is there anyone who inspires you? Um inspires me um probably the man that had had the biggest uh, input into my career would be a trainer called peter easterby uh he's retired now his son trains tim but i was very involved with him when i was in my my sort of mid-20s um i was riding till i was a jockey till i was about 26 and then i started running a livery yard and uh and buying and selling foals and yearlings and store horses, which are jumping horses. And I, uh, I, I used to take, a, not take advice. I would listen to him, I think is the word that I would like to use. He, he was a, a man of few words uh, and things he used to say have stuck to my mind for, for, for all the time I've been training. I mean, Peter used to be, was probably one of the greatest dual person purpose trainers when I say dual purpose just to put it in uh, sort of trained flat horses and national hunt horses jumping horses I think he trained uh, over 3,000 winners and uh, Cheltenham winners he's trained group one winners on the flat from five furlong sprinters to 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 horses running in the Grand National which is over four and a half mile but when I say I looked up to uh, 
he wouldn't be a man that would tell you something, but he would say things that you would you would respect and things that he said has stuck to my mind all my life. And I think one of the important things probably was the buying of horses. He, he was a big help on, on confirmation and, um, you know, horses, why, why some of them go faster than others. I feel that he's, he was very good at that and keeping horses sound and buying a sound horse. And so Peter Easterby would probably have been the biggest impact on me. Uh, be it he's been retired probably 10 or 12 years. He's still alive. He's 91 years of age. Wow. 92. <laughs> he could be 92 now. But as a, as a child, I remember him having all the winners at Cheltenham and, and Ascot and everywhere. But uh, he's, he's, he definitely had a big impact on, on my life. Amazing. Is this how you started in the industry? Um, I started as a jockey, believe it or not. Oh. Uh, I wouldn't say a very successful one. Uh, I rode on the flat and I pulled over over the jumps, but uh, I retired quite early uh, at the age of 26. Uh, and then I went to buying and selling horses and running a livery yard. And somebody that I'd ridden for asked me if I'd train a few for them. And um, it went well. Um, so we're sort of nearly three and a half thousand winners later. We're uh, we've we, we've had a good time. We've had a good time. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Richard, for the interview today. Really appreciate it. Thank you, sir.